Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on, on the bench today we have this homebrew Roger Beep that I um, got in a job lot of bits and pieces. And instead of putting it in the bin, I thought, well, I'm going to have a play with it. So it was actually faulty. Just one of the um, 4011s had gone faulty on it. But we got it working. So I thought, let's try and recreate it. So let's have a look at the board. So we've got a pair of 4011s, which are in sockets now, because I put them in sockets. We have a 4017, a load of 1 meg um, potentiometers. And as you can see, this is most definitely homemade. There is no way that this has been made in a factory, as you can see. I don't think they even used um, letter print. It looks like it was actually drawn and then maybe photo etched. But yeah, most definitely homebrew. Most definitely old, I would say anybody recognizes it please let me know but on this we've got a single tone a five tone and a seven tone options on it which I thought was quite unusual it's from this switch we've got a three position switch a single tone five tone and then a seven tone So I thought let's try and let's try and recreate it. See if I can make a version of it. So I painstakingly reverse engineered it and um drew a schematic for it and um yeah we made a board for it. So I've left some of the unusual components as through hole, but any of the um, straightforward box standard components I've put as surface mount because they were cheap enough to get made with the board so we'll start building it so we'll put some sockets in just because you know CMOS devices and all that so there's a better view of the parts on the underside of the board so it's just basically box standard parts there, some decoupling for the high C's, some diodes which were just 4148's. So we'll put in the 1 meg potentiometers that control the pitch of the tones. We'll get those soldered into place. And there, it's coming along quite nicely. So we fitted some electrolytics in there, the ones that I knew about. So on the board, there's some parts that are oddball values. So we're going to have to try and do something with those. We've got the relay switch in as well for the PTT switching. Now it's this capacitor that I wasn't sure of, and I'm not too sure about how to read the colour codes on these capacitors so we'll put it in the capacitor meter and see what that has to say and 1.1 nanofarad which I thought was a bit of a strange value we'll test it again just in case the leads are dirty no 1.1 nanofarad of an oddball value it should be one nan but i tried it in my other capacitor meter and yet it's reading roughly the same so yeah must be now i only got one nan capacitors so those will have to do so we're trying with these ceramic discs at the moment and we'll see how those go but that's it completed with its oddball resistor values fitted the two in the middle are actually two in series that gives a rather bizarre value but never mind so let's try it 
So just hooking it up to a supply and grounding the PTT, we can hear that it's actually clicking the relay and it's got a delay on it. So something's working. So let's try it on my radio. So it does sound a bit strange, not sure what's going on there. So we'll try the original one. That's got a nice crisp sound to it. So I'm not sure what's going on here. But I changed the ceramic discs out. It's made a little bit of a difference. I did monitor the waveform on a scope and they seem to be roughly the same. So as you can hear it is beeping accordingly, so that's in single beep mode. If we go too high it doesn't produce a beep. But yeah, seems to be working. But it just didn't sound as good as the original one. And this was annoying me. Because the original one sounded nice and crisp, but there was just something wrong with this. And when you scope the waveform, it just wasn't right. And I wasn't happy. Thousands of tears later. Now it sounds a lot better. It sounds crisp and responsive. And actually doing what it should be doing. So what had I what had I made a mess of? As you can see there's a bodge wire underneath and had completely forgot to connect the supply to the to the decayed counter. So I really do not know how it worked. Because there was just no supply to the um 4017 but now now it's now it's working properly now it's good so anyway I hope you enjoyed that video and um, my small blunder but I couldn't rest until I got it working and I think it's good now so yeah mission accomplished make a copy of this with some modern parts anyway i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe join the facebook group buy me a coffee join patreon thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode